And the fact is, although you're the hardest person you will ever lead. <laughs> you, know, you may have a, a title have said, a few people have said that yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you may have a title you know and a title may give you some responsibility of leading other people but that does not make you a leader that just gives you the title leadership is something that is earned and i like how john maxwell puts this he says leadership is influence nothing more and nothing less Influence takes time and authority to build. It's not just something that's automatically given. You have to earn it. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the Odd Man. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, where we're dedicated to help you live your best audacious life ever. I'm totally thrilled to have you here and appreciate you for taking time out of your day to join us. Now, just like embarking on an audacious adventure, this podcast is your guide to embracing boldness, courage, and growth in every aspect of your life. You know, we'll be talking about change management on this podcast. And when you think about it, change management, uh, with especially within an organization, is like tending to a garden. Just as the way the gardener must carefully plan and nurture and adapt to the changing seasons to cultivate a thriving garden, A leader in change management must cultivate a supportive environment, foster growth, and adapt to evolving circumstances to drive organizational transformation. Today, we have a special guest who knows a thing or two about managing change. William Attaway is a renowned leadership expert, and he joins us to share his wisdom on catalytic leadership and how how it can transform your life. William's insights are a beacon of light for those seeking to lead with intention, make an impact, and unlock their full potential. Get ready to be inspired and empowered by William's journey and expertise. Hey, William, thank you for being here and joining me on the Audacious Living podcast. I I appreciate you uh, for taking the time to do this, my friend. Hey, man, thanks so much for the invitation. I'm excited to be here. Thanks. No, I, I listen. I, I as I was saying before we press record, you know that that I, I, I so much enjoy these conversations because of of, of, of what they offer. Uh, and so the, inf- and the the inspiration and the insights and uh, there's so much good information out there. And so <laughs> I uh, I do appreciate you contributing to the cause. That's uh, much appreciated. Um, the, the 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 aspect or topic that you sort of specialize in is around is, is leadership. Um, which is fantastic. Quite frankly, it's, it's, it's kind of one of my favorite topics. And more so because uh, for the longest time, when I, I thought of leadership, it was always this, this thing that people had. I, I didn't understand the concept of personal leadership or anything yeah. of that nature or leading yourself. Or, and nah, I was always, you were in this designated role, you're in this designated position, and that's what made you a leader. But the fact of the matter is, that, that's nowhere nowhere close to reality. That's only a part of it, a fraction of it. There's far much yes. more, isn't there? Absolutely. And the fact is, although you're the hardest person you will ever lead. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you may have a, a title. Have said, a few people have said that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you may have a title, you know, and a title may give you some responsibility of leading other people, but that does not make you a leader. That just gives you the title. Leadership is something that is earned. And I like how John Maxwell puts this. He says, leadership is influence, nothing more and nothing less. Influence takes time and authority to build. It's not just something that's automatically given. You have to earn it. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and that's the piece uh, that I think is oftentimes forgotten because, and, and then the other problem too is if, if you're, you're, you're a new leader. So let's say you, you've earned it, you've gotten it. It's, it's, and oftentimes what happens is you were given this position of leadership because you did a particular job really, really well, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, the job of a leader is an entirely different job and from what you were doing before. And and, and I think oftentimes where new leaders sort of get, into some, get themselves into trouble because they're trying to do what they're doing before and not recognizing this is a brand new role or realm that they're in. I wonder if you can comment on that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely spot on. You know, most of my work is in executive coaches and coaching one-on-one with leaders. And uh, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and founders who started something because they were really good at it. They're really good at providing a product or a service. And then they have to hire other people to help them with fulfillment. Right. And then all of a sudden they've got people looking at them to lead. 
Well, that's a different skill set. And what I find is that often these founders, these entrepreneurs who are so good at this product or service end up breaking their own businesses, mm. right? Because they don't know how to lead well. It's a different skill set. It's one that can and should be developed. Anybody can develop it. Anybody can work on this, but you have to choose to do so. You have to be intentional. It's not just going to happen. Right. Yeah. There's some work. For sure, there's some work. Um, I'm curious, maybe uh, maybe if you can sort of tell us a little about your leadership journey and what's got you to the point now where, where we're able to help others. Absolutely. You know, I started, mine starts a little early. I, I was 15 years old when I went to my first leadership conference. Nice. Uh, and I, not a lot of 15 year olds in that room. <laughs> but, did, did, but had, did you know what was happening? Did you know? Like, it's interesting. Because yeah, I, I, I had a leader. Now, I had a teacher who saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And he invited me to go. I went, I sat, I listened, and I was hooked. The power, the influence of a leader, for good or for bad, to create change. The power of a leader to lead a movement, to accomplish more than any one person can do alone. Leadership is a, is a powerful, powerful tool. And what I've spent the last, well, over 30 years now, almost 40 years uh, studying is what that leadership looks like. What does it mean? How do you leverage it for good? How do you become truly what I call a catalytic leader, a leader that inspires, that makes a difference, makes an impact? You know, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. You started, you, you intentionally said for good. Uh, yes. And I, I, I want to zero in on that for a moment because <laughs> you can use leadership for bad and it can work just the opposite way as well. Um, so so the, the fact that you've identified it specifically in that, that manner, um, I think it's a, per, a, a point worth noting because it can go either way, really. You know, it's like a hammer. You can use a hammer to build a house <laughs> and you can use a hammer to break somebody's knees, right? I mean, same hammer. <laughs> right, right. leadership is like that you can use it to build up or you can use it to tear down and and the reality is we don't have to look very far into the history book do we to to find people who have used their leadership influence not to build people up but to tear them down to destroy them they've led they've led movements but those movements were not for the better of other people right Right. And, and this is such a danger. And this is something leaders have to be so mindful of. One of my mentors, Andy Stanley, says that your words weigh 10,000 pounds as a leader, mm. whether you want them to or not. Your words weigh 10,000 pounds. You may say, well, I don't, I don't want my words to be taken that heavily. <laughs> I hate that for you. That's reality. Deal with it. You're the leader. Your words are going to weigh 10,000 pounds. And are you going to be mindful of that? Are you going to understand that words matter, that language matters? Being, being mindful, I think that's a really, really significant point as well, because oftentimes there's influence that you have, regardless of in your leadership role or not, because that's the whole thing is that you, as we just talked about the topic, you don't have to be in that leadership role for people for you to have influence over people. If you have this influence, you have this quote unquote power, it's, you know, I, I, as a kid, I was a big a you know, big fan of Spider-Man, and there was that mod line where great power comes great responsibility, right? That's right. Know, if you have that power, you have you have the responsibility to use it right, right, the right way. And I think that's important that needs to be recognized because if you don't recognize it, you, know, you, you potentially can create a lot of chaos. You really can because a leader's ripples extend farther and touch deeper than anybody else's. That's why you have to be so careful. That's why you have to be so mindful of how you say what you say, as well as what you say. I wonder if you can expand on, you, you talked about catalytic leadership. I wonder if you can expand a bit more and that to give, a, give a, an audience or a picture of, of what that is. Absolutely. You know, when, when I talk about catalytic leadership, people are wondering, are you talking about a car? Is that a part of a car? Or like you're kind of thinking like, oh, what's going on here? It actually comes out of part of my story. When I went to college, I went as a pharmacy major. I had worked in a pharmacy in high school and thought this would be a great way to help people, you know, make a difference. I get there and I get into my second year and I hit organic chemistry. And I decided this is not really what I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> this is not, this is not where I want to be. And that's, that's intentional. Organic chemistry is actually the washout point for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, that's a good thing. 
uh, in my brief chemistry studies, you know, there's no such thing as a wasted experience. And in my brief chemistry studies, what I discovered was the power of what's called a catalyst. A catalyst is something that you introduce into a mixture to incite or to accelerate significant change or action. Mm. You know, at that point, I had studied leadership for just a handful of years, but I thought, you know, every great leader that I have ever studied or worked for would resonate with that definition. They would resonate with that. They would, they would see their work as being a catalyst in their environment, in their organization, their business, their whatever they're in. And so I thought, well, what would it look like for a leader to intentionally choose to be catalytic in how they lead? And that's what I've been studying probably for the last three decades. What does that look like? What does that mean mm -hmm. to be catalytic, to truly lead with the intention of making an impact? Yeah, yeah. I, I just love the idea. Even when you think about making a difference and what that, you know, what that potentially can do. Um, I'm all about impact. I love just, you know, measuring impact and watching it develop and watching what it does to others. And so when you think of leadership, I, that's exactly what leadership is. It, it's, yeah. it's really about the impact that you can have on other people. Absolutely. And again, this is the beauty of, of what I get to do. I get to pour into leaders who are then going to make a difference in the lives of every person on their team. Mm -hmm. Every client or customer they serve, their spouse, their kids, if they have kids, like every one of those is going to be impacted by the ripples from that leader. That's the reach, the breadth and the width of a leader. Yeah. What yep. a privilege. Yeah. What responsibility. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love it. It, it, it actually drives you and, and uh, I, uh, can motivate you to do so, so much. And uh, that's why I've always been a really big fan of leadership. But there's a big part of, of, of leadership that we talked on the top about just, you know, leading yourself. Uh, yeah. And, and, and uh, I, what I liked about your story, um, uh, at the age of 15, someone saw something in you. Yeah. And, 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 and that is leadership in itself to be able to bring out the best out of others because that's really what leaders are, are, you know, their role is. And that happened for you and, and, and here you are now. So I think that's a phenomenal way to get started, if you ask me. Well, you know, I think we have to understand the power of our invitation as a leader. Yeah. You know, learning to lead yourself is a skill. Learning to recognize leadership in other people and invite them when they don't see it. And that's an incredible privilege and power. Here's another way that your words weigh 10,000 pounds. Because when you speak as a leader into the life of someone who, who didn't see themselves that way yet, who didn't see what you see, you can help to bring that to reality. You know, it's really hard to see the whole picture when you're in the frame. Absolutely. Yep. No, I think, it, yeah, Natal, I love that because, um, in fact, I, I, I can remember an instance. So, so for several years, I was a, a commissioner of a Canadian basketball, a big basketball. Nice. Player. And, I, and, and, and I, I, um, I had a friend of mine who was, he was, he was ill for a number of years battling, um, uh, it was you know was a fight with cancer, mm -hmm. and knowing that he knowing that he was a big basketball fan, we were having this event. I invited him out with me. Now at the time, I wasn't in this commissioner role. I was just helping out doing odds and ends type of stuff. And uh, you know he 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 was he was you know he attended. We were there. I was doing some stuff, working whatever. And at the end of the night, I remember we were driving home, and I said, "Hey, well, how was it? How did you? Like, what do you think about it? Goes, oh, it was fantastic. It was great. I love it. Thank you for inviting me." And he said, you know, oddly, I can see you running, I can see you running this league one day. And I remember my first call was, no, Rick, you gotta be kidding me. What do you, no way, no, you're, no. And I remember just shooting <laughs> it down. He kept saying, no, 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 I see it. And I'm like, no, Rick, what are you talking about? Well, five years later, you know, what he spoke into existence, it was exactly what happened. Yeah. And, and, and and I remember, you know, the, the piece around the story that always resonates with me is, uh, uh, you know, sadly, Rick had passed, succumbed to his illness prior to me getting this appointment. And, and I remember in the moment when, you know, I, I got this call and I was asked, hey, the, you know, the board of directors is thinking this direction. Why you assume this role? What do you think? And I instantly thought of Rick. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is exactly what Rick saw. And I remember sort of feeling this kind of a sadness. I'm going, he's not here to witness this thing that, you know, he, he spoke into existence. 
But then I realized that, you know, he didn't need to be because he already saw it years before. Exactly. Exactly right. Right. right? And so powerful, powerful. And so when you when you talk about that, that you know, it's, I, I'm living in proof that absolutely is true. It does happen. People see stuff in you. And whether you see it or not, uh, you know, it, it's there. And I think, and so my advice has always been when, when someone comments or someone makes that suggestion, yeah. before you shoot it down, stop and listen. So good. So good, Ollie. That, so spot on. Your words weigh 10,000 pounds. We've covered that, right? The power of your words. But leaders also, Maxwell teaches us, see before anybody else sees, right? They see what could be. They see what should be. What did he see in you? He saw what could be. He saw what should be. He saw it. He heard it. Touched it. Yeah. And he made it real for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a leader. Yeah. No, always, always. That It's been, again, it's, it's one of those things where you, you, you can read it in a book and go, oh, yeah, yeah. But when you live that experience, like, oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Now I get it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Spot on, man. I love that. Yeah. Tell me, t tell me uh, and talk about the, 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 the role of a leader uh, during the process of change. You know, change is, change is hard for people. Uh, it's, it's often been said that nobody likes change. And I would beg to disagree. I think, I think certain people like change. The people for whom it was their idea, they, they like the change. <laughs> right? If it's your idea, you're all about it. Um, if it's not your idea, less so. And a leader is the person who stands at the front of the room and helps to explain not just why things should be a certain way, not just think why things could be. They don't just paint a picture of, of why we need to go that direction. They also explain why you can't stay here. They also explain why, you, why, why it's not tenable to just keep the status quo. That's an important part. And this is something that I think a lot of leaders forget when they're dealing with change management. They have no problem painting a picture of what could be and should be. They have no problem painting a picture of there. That's absolutely it. But a whole lot of people are going to say, why can't we stay here? <laughs> this is comfortable. This is no, what has I been. I like it. I'm used to it. This is all I know. Why change? Right. Right. Why change? I'm good. And I think that's why it's so, so important to say, okay, and this is why we can't stay here. Go ahead and get in front of it. Call out the elephant in the room. Take away some of its power and say, no, 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 no. We can't stay here. And this is why. Right, right, right. There, there, there is something to be said about that, you know, when, when you you can paint a picture of what the future state will look like. Yeah. Right? And, and so so it's, 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 it's in addition to saying, hey, we've got to change. Here's why. Here's what we're moving towards. Here's what yeah. it looks like. And here, and so and we've always heard about the power in that why, and it really started with the why, but it really is true. When you can connect that why to individuals, what matters to them, what yes. think is significant, you can make significant change. Even those who are leery from the very beginning, you can make that change for them. Absolutely. And you understand that the leader's job is to take up the microphone and do just that. Too many people think they, they, they can shy away from the microphone part of leadership. But leadership almost always eventually comes with a microphone. You got to pick it up. You got to step out into it and lead the way. Right. If you're not willing to do that, how on earth do you expect anyone to follow you? Got you. Got you. So as as you started to develop, I, you know, you, you talked about starting at the age of 15 and working through, as you started to develop your 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 own, I guess, leadership philosophies, if you will, um, uh, uh, what, what were some of the influences or what things did you bring into play or it, it include to get you to where you are now? You know, that's, that's a great question. There, there have been so many influences in my life and my journey. You know, I, I started out in the business world, working in that arena and moved into the nonprofit, into the church world, led yes. in that arena and started my own coaching practice and have been coaching leaders now for, for nearly 30 years wow. uh, in a variety of different contexts. You know, whether it's military, whether it's education, whether it's the C-suite, or whether it's a solopreneur. And the influences that, that have impacted me over all that time are the ones that still do. These, these are the books that I read. I'm a voracious reader. Uh, I will typically read, you know, between 125 and 150 books a year uh, because that's a way that I continue to learn and grow. 
I'm not, I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel. Right? I want to learn from people who are farther down the road than I am. If somebody hits a ditch, I want to know where that ditch is so I don't hit it. Right? Like, I'm not going to live long enough to make all the mistakes myself. Like, I'm like to avoid it. Share a little bit, right? Share the experience. Right? Exactly. So, so I read a lot. You know, podcasts are fantastic tools to learn and grow while you're on the go. You know, you can listen, you can learn, and you can hear experiences and perspectives that are far different from your own and and benefit from those things and allow those to inform your leadership. So, you know, the books that I read, the, the podcasts that I listen to, and the conferences, the workshops, the seminars that I attend. You know, I've, I've been, I, that wasn't the, the last leadership conference I went to when I was 15. Uh, there's one that I've been attending for 24 years now, straight. Like I, I, I go every year to this particular one, the Global Leadership Summit, because I find it to be so practical, so helpful, so useful in developing my philosophy of leadership, which is ever developing. There's never a point where you can say, oh, you know, I got this. I understand that I'm an expert. I got it all down now. No, no, continual student. There's never a point where you stop learning, you stop growing. So I do, I do appreciate that point around the ongoing learning and the continuous improvement, uh, because there, there is, there's just, there's just so much to learn. You know, there, there are so many experiences that are out there that you, quite frankly, will never know until you actually go through them. And you, you, you know, I don't think our lives are long enough to experience them all. Uh, and so the idea of being able to to pick up from others, to uh, gain further insights, to understand different approaches. Uh, those, those all matter because I think the piece that is oftentimes lost on leadership is that the, 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 the approach that you take, it can be a cookie cutter because no. the individuals that you're dealing with, they're all different. They all have different drivers. They're unique in their own, their, their, own, their, their, their own uniqueness. And so to take an approach on this person A, because it worked with person B, but they're two entirely different. I think that's a downfall or mistake. Absolutely. Out of the hundreds of leaders that I have coached over the years, no two were the, exactly the same. <laughs> right. No two had the same journey. No two had the same goals, objectives. No two had the same path. And one of the things that, that I do is I customize what I do to help those leaders move from where they are to where they want to be. Yeah. But that's different with each one because they all have a different journey. We have to accept that. We have to understand that and give ourselves grace. You know, too often when we start as a new leader, we we want to copy, right? We want to copy a leader that we admire, or that we respect, whether it's one we, yeah. we've known and worked for personally or one we've admired from afar. That's normal. Problem comes when you stay there. <laughs> and if you stay in the place where you're just copying, you're mimicking someone else, then eventually... All you're going to become, Ollie, is a bad copy of a great leader. Mm. You have to learn to lead from a place of authenticity, a place of how you are, from how you are designed, how you are wired. And yep. so this is one of the things I get to do. I get to help leaders discover how they're wired so they can lead from that authentic place. Yes. Understanding this is who you lead. At. This is how you lead best. And when they lead from that place, there's nobody else like them. So that so then for, for a new leader, what, what's your approach when you get started? So we talked earlier about, you know, you're doing great in job A, you're now putting job B of leadership is totally different. What's the starting point for a new leader? You know, too often organizations throw people into the deep end. <laughs> they say, okay, you were a great salesperson. Now you're going to be a sales manager. And you have to manage all the salespeople now because you were so great at sales. Well, that's not the same job. <laughs> Just because you were great at this doesn't mean you're going to be great at that. Right, right. And they throw them in the deep end. They may send them to a workshop or a seminar, or hand them a book and say, hey, here, learn how to be a leader and you're, you're good. That is a failed and broken system. <laughs> like we need to acknowledge that, right? The, the, the single best way you can help a leader to grow and develop, I believe, is through coaching. Somebody who's farther down the road than they are, who can come alongside them, help them to develop understand their wiring as a leader first, but then develop their areas of primary focus where they want to grow and develop, how it will best contribute to their growth and to the organization's mission. And when you do that, then you're impacting that person for the rest of their life because you're teaching them how to lead, how to grow, how to develop. So that's the first thing I say when you have a new leader put into a role, they need a coach. They need somebody who's going to come alongside them and help them 
to learn how to learn, to yeah. learn how to grow and develop. I I, I do think that there's uh, some value in, in, in as a new leader and giving yourself a little bit of grace. Oh, uh, that you're probably yes. gonna, you're probably gonna make a mistake or two along the way. Um, you know, I or, remember or ten. Well, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, was, <laughs> we're rounding up, yeah, let's round up ten. Uh, you know, I, 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 again, again, I think back to, to, to that leadership appointment I received, uh, and, and, and my biggest mistake early on is uh, because I was so used to being a doer, yeah. that I kept doing. Yes, I wasn't leading, and in fact, um, it, it took me a while to make that distinction where no, my role has changed. And it was just really easy to jump in and get my hands dirty because I've always done it that way. And um, I, I'd probably say the first, maybe the first year, uh, I didn't replace myself, right? I was yeah. doing, and, and and that led to some challenges, right? Because it was like, well, I, you know, I was feeling, oh man, is, is this too much? I'm really busy. I got so much going on. And not recognizing that I was making it harder for myself by not stopping the old job, right? And I think you keyed in on one of the, the biggest challenges people have when they move into a leadership role. You know, we find the high performers get things done. Right. They get things done. Yes, yes. And then we put them in a leadership role. And what do they think their job is? To get things done, because that's what they've always done. That's all, what's always been their path to success. That's right. As a leader, your job is not to get things done. Your job is to get things done through other people. That's right. Is to lead your team to get things done. Oh, now that's a whole different ball game. Sure. Now, if you're focused on the doing, if you're focused on getting things done yourself, you're not leading. You're just doing. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, it really involves a shift in mindset, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it really does. And and a mindset shift is is something that's so easy to say as it comes out of our mouths. <laughs> it's so difficult to actually have happen. No <laughs> problem done. This is this is why I've had coaches for many 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 years myself in different areas of my life because I need somebody who can see what I can't see, who can be on the outside looking in, and who can say, "Hey, I know, I know you're in it, so you can't see it, but let me help you see this." And they help to effect a mindset shift. Yeah. because of a perspective difference. I only have one perspective. Only. I have my perspective. I need other perspectives yes. in order to shift my mindset. That's right. Yep, yep, you're right. And and the idea of, of, of making that shift, uh, uh, I think, so first off, recognition of what your role is or what your new role is, it has to start there. You know, a recognition of, of now who you, you're leading and, and how you inspire, motivate them to do, to perform to the best of their ability, but also, and also recognizing, you know, the, 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 the organization as a whole, and you've got an obligation to move the entire organization forward. So there's, right. there's a lot of moving parts really for, for leaders these days, aren't there? Absolutely. And I, and I think you keyed in on one there, understanding the people that you lead, you know, the great leaders, the leaders that really truly make an impact, make a difference don't just see the people that they lead as cogs in their machine that that, that accomplish a task. Mm -hmm. They see them as actual 3D human beings. Yes. Yes. They see them as people who have hopes and dreams of their own. Right. And they help them to take steps toward those hopes and dreams as they work to accomplish the missions of the, the organizational missions and objectives. Yeah. The, the, the um, the, the, the role of a leader, I see it, it's, it's, it's sort of ever changing, it's ever evolving. Yeah, and there's always, there's always new experiences um, and, and, and new approaches, uh, things that you've never account, encountered before. How, how does a leader equip themselves when everything is new or tomorrow is unknown? Or how, how do you prepare? Because that, that's, I mean, it's one thing, it's one to say, I've done this before, I know how to do it, but we've never de seen it before. How do you manage? There's a new AI tool. And if you just get this AI tool, this will fix it for the rest of your life. No, I'm just kidding. That's not okay. I'll be, I'll be right down. I'm like, okay, what is it? Tell me. <laughs> no. no, I mean, some people want that. They want it to be that sure, simple. Sure. Here's the actual truth the function of leadership, the privilege of leadership is one that you never master. 
Mm. You have to be a perpetual student. You have to commit to never stop learning. You have to get up every day and say, I'm going to be the most teachable person in every environment I'm in today. Every conversation, every meeting I'm in, I'm going to be the most teachable person in the room. I'm going to ask more questions than I make statements. When you do that, you are modeling and stepping into the higher form of leadership. That's how you keep learning. That's how you keep growing. That's how you step into whatever the next iterations of leadership are going to look like. Because you've never stopped. You never stop learning. You stop learning as a leader. You stop growing as a leader. You stop leading. You're done. Right. That's right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, now, I understand, William, you're also a pastor, right? You're currently yeah. So, yeah. so, 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 so tell, tell me how uh, uh, um, does a leadership dynamic change in, in, in a church setting or, or how is it different or how is it the same or is it the same? It, it is, it is in many ways the same, but let me tell you how it's different. Wow. <laughs> in the business world, if you have a team member and you want them to get things done, you have leverage over them. Gotcha. It's their paycheck, right? In a church setting, you have to lead in a purer way because you have no leverage. These are volunteers. They choose whether they're going to show up or not. They choose whether they're going to attend or not. They choose whether they're going to be there or not. Right. And they can go somewhere else anytime they want to. Now, so can your employees, let's be honest. Sure, sure. But with the leverage of a paycheck, you have some leverage. You have some tool to try to make them do what you want them to do. Yes. In a church context, leadership has to be a much purer form because you have to lead not out of leverage. You have to lead focused on the mission. Why are we here? What is this about? What are we trying to accomplish that none of us can accomplish together alone, but together we can see this happen? And you lead people towards something bigger and greater and far more important than what we do in business. Yeah, it's, it's actually, I, I, I appreciate the response there because I, uh, and I've never looked at it from a leverage standpoint or a leverage angle. Um, you're 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 leading people who are are so tied into their faith, like what they're doing is is yeah. a result of their tie into their faith, and so uh, the, the 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 stronger their, their faith is, um, I'm not gonna say the, the easier they lead, but certainly that supports the the, the leadership model where people who have that strong faith, does it not? Yeah, absolutely. Faith faith is something that should touch every part of your life. Mm. Right? We want to compartmentalize our lives sometimes. We want to say, well, what happens over here shouldn't affect what happens in other parts of right. my life. And right. my faith shouldn't affect my work. And my work shouldn't affect, you know. Guess what? You're an integrated person. <laughs> every part yes. touches every other part. That's what it means to live a life of integrity, where every part touches every other part. And so when you're in the church and you're a leader, your faith has to inform your leadership. Right? You have mm -hmm. to understand what does it mean to lead in a community of faith? Well, Jesus taught us that, right? What does it look like to lead? You lead in such a way that you're considering others, right? What is the one commandment that Jesus gave the disciples the night before he's crucified? The one thing, this is how everybody will know you're my followers. If you love one another. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's so simple. And yet we still haven't gotten it right. <laughs> it, it is a struggle for some yeah it is a struggle for some <laughs> but that that self-sacrificing leadership that others first leadership yes like that's what we get to model in the church that's what we get to show because the one who came for us modeled it for us we get to now take and carry that model forward what does it mean to love one another as a leader it means to serve one another mm. it means to put others first to consider them before we consider ourselves. Right. Right. That type of servant leadership, this is what Jesus taught us. And in the church, when we do that right, people lean in. Yes. People are drawn toward that because it's so, so different than what they see in the workplace. Sure, sure, sure. And I really do think it it, it, it supports that. You know, you so we always you know, hear the importance of, of, of making that why, like why you do what you do as clear as possible. Yeah. Well, you know, with what you described, that supports that in a major big way. It supports that why, because people are that their 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 faith uh, is driving them to do the things that they need to do for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for me, I'm a person of faith, 
right? This is, this informs every part of my life. And that also informs how I lead and why I lead to your point. Why do I do what I do? Why do I do it the way that I do it? That's why. Uh, you, you know, there's a line here. I'm going to read it because I think it's a great. You talk about um, you know, you're helping individuals you know, conquer challenging situations and match that potential with clear minded, focused, calm, control, and confidence. Um, the combination of those words are just beautiful um, because it's, it's, it's something that you can adopt in even just your, your, your own personal life, right? Being clear and calm and, 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 and having that focus. I wonder if you can elaborate on, on, on the combination of those special words. Absolutely. You know, those three, those three phrases and words, those are, those are the components of what I teach when I'm coaching a leader, right? It begins, if you think about it, like three levels of a pyramid, the bottom of the pyramid, the base, that's your clear-minded focus. This is what you have to have before you can do anything else. Too many people are leading reactively out of chaos. They're just responding and reacting to everything around them. I mean, that's a way to lead. I think there's a better way. <laughs> By getting clarity and understanding through focus exactly where you are and where you want to be, you can begin to take steps toward that. And you can be intentional, far more intentional than if you're just reacting. So I work with clients to help them develop clear-minded focus around what's the next steps for you? What are the next steps toward the goals that you have, whether they're personal, professional, organizational, whatever they are, how are we going to help you move from where you are to where you want to be? You've got to have clear-minded focus to get there. That's the first part of the pyramid. The, the second part, well, this is calm control. <laughs> so often when you're in that chaos, you're in that, that white water phase, like everything is just bubbling and churning all yeah, around yeah, you and yeah, you're yeah. just, ah, it's hard to be calm. <laughs> and you, people will let their emotions drive their decision-making. Yes. And, that, and that can be incredibly dangerous. And yes. so what I teach them is to lead from a place of calm control, to understand that your emotions are part of your life. They're part of how God designed you to have emotions. They need to be passengers in your car, but you should never let them drive. You're going to end up in a ditch 100% of the time. Leading from a place of calm control is leading from a place of what David Allen describes as a mind like water, where you're going to appropriately respond to what is happening. You're not going to overreact. You're not going to underreact. And you're going to return to that calm state. That's the second part. Right, yep. so you've got clear-minded focus, yep. you've got calm yep. control, yep. and when you have those two things, what does that build? Over time, it builds confidence, and confidence is what you need to lead effectively into the unknown, into tomorrow. Right, what happens today helps you to develop the confidence that you need to lead into tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and, and I do see the natural synergy between all three of those levels. And uh, and then the, 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 so the, with the, the, that focus and and being able to be very clear, managing your emotions, and then create that confidence, to, and that can open up the doors for all sorts of great things. And so I think that's a, a really great way of breaking that down. Uh, you, 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 you've got a book out, William. I wonder what you can fill our listeners in on, on what that's all about. Absolutely. So you know, I've been, like I said, I've been coaching leaders for for a while, almost thirty years now. And in my most recent book, what I did is I, I tried to capture a lot of the threads that have run through many of those coaching conversations. You know, not everybody has the the, the resources to invest in one on one executive coaching. And so this book is a way that I've tried to make some of these some of these lessons, these principles, accessible for anybody. You can take and you can learn 12 of the key principles, these threads that have run through so many of these conversations that can help you to move from where you are to becoming a more catalytic, intentional leader. Wow. Wow. Um, I think it's great. Like, I really do. I, I, I just, I, I'm all about the impact and what people can, uh, how they can impact others and the way they do it. And there's different styles and approaches, no question about it. Uh, but uh, I, I think that's the, the, the fun part of the leadership journey. Uh, you know, we've been, talk, we've been talking so much about, oh, they got to do this, they got to do that, there's this. Stuff. But there, there is a fun aspect of it once you sort of find that sweet spot and you can do all sorts of great things. And so I, I want to I wanna, I wanna make it all sound like it's tough because there are some really good benefits to it, aren't there? <laughs> there are. You know, and there, there are hard days because there's hard days doing anything. But when you can 
pour into somebody and invest in somebody and paint a picture for them of something that they don't see in themselves yet. Yep. Like, like someone did for you and someone did for me. And then that happens and they develop and they grow Yes. and they become a leader mm -hmm. and there's nothing like it. Yeah. Sweet. Very sweet. Well, yeah, this has been awesome, man. I, I so appreciate that uh, you, you being here and sharing the matter which you, you have. Um, I, I think your insights are, are bang on. And I mean, you're, you're look, doing this since 15 years old. You obviously picked up a few things along the way. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, if our listeners wanted to check you out and learn more about you, or even hear your podcast, where, where, could, where could we send them? Well, you know, if you go to my LinkedIn profile, just look for William C. Attaway. Uh, and you can connect with me there. I'll, I'm very active on LinkedIn these days. Uh, my podcast is the Catalytic Leadership Podcast, just like the book, the Catalytic Leadership Book. And so you can uh, just remember the branding and that'll be pretty consistent all the way throughout. Uh, you can go to catalyticleadership.net to find out more about the podcast, the book, the coaching and everything else that I'm up to these days. Oh, that's so, so awesome. Man. That's great stuff. I, I, I got to congratulate you uh, on, uh, on the journey that you've taken uh, and, and committed to your entire life. Uh, you know, I think sometimes we, when we, when we, we, we take advantage of the fact that, uh, or take for granted rather, uh, that we, uh, that, you know, we, we found our journey, we're living our purpose, right? I do think that's, that, that should be celebrated, recognized, and you've certainly done that clearly. Uh, your whole life has been dedicated to leadership. And so uh, thank you for that. Congratulations. And again, thank you for being here. It was awesome chatting with you, man. And all the best. I've so enjoyed this all day. Thank you for having me. Same here. Be well. You too. As William highlighted in our conversation, leadership is not just about holding a title or position. It's about influence, impact, and serving others. Leading with authenticity, clarity, and a calm control can pave the way for personal and professional growth. Remember, in the garden of life, you have the power to steer your path, embrace challenges, and soar to new heights. Let William's words resonate with you as you embark on your audacious journey towards a fulfilling and purpose-driven life. Thank you for tuning in to the Audacious Living Podcast. I hope today's episode has inspired you to embrace audacity, lead with intention, and make a difference. Stay tuned for more empowering conversations and insights to help you live your best audacious life ever. Remember, audacious uh, living that audacious life is waiting for you just around the corner. You've got to go claim it. So go forth boldly and embrace the adventure because it absolutely is all yours. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, show love to one another, and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoy what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.